off slide over. Seven o'clock on a wonderful Wednesday day. It's been beautiful out there. I'd like to welcome everyone to the budget committee. It is seven o'clock. I'd like to call the meeting to order. All members are present except for Mr. Brown. So Mr. Bossy. Mr. Bossy. Mr. Bossy, I'm sorry, Mr. Brown is here. I didn't see you down there, so how could I miss you, Mr. Bossy? My diet's working. <laughs> Your diet is working. Okay, at this point, I would like to bring forward the meeting minutes of April 9th meeting for review and to be voted on. Make a motion to accept the minutes as written. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay, motion passed. <coughs> okay, second part of the agenda, uh, third part of the agenda is a vacancy. We've had one applicant to join us, uh, and she will be here next week. Not here, but with our meeting next week to be interviewed. Next week or next month? Next month. Next month, excuse me. Next month. I forget a week, month. The school board's got me crazy. Um, next month. Um, she will be coming to the meeting, have a chance to interview her. Uh, everyone got the email that I sent in regards to her at New Hampshire, New Jersey. Sorry, I didn't know. Okay, now make sure that you. We'll get you, we'll get you a copy of it. Right. So that's the only one we have at this point in time, so we'll go from there. Anyone else to approach? Or I've asked okay. a couple of people if they were interested, but they weren't. Okay, good. Keep trying. We have to keep going on. Okay. At this time in the in the budget, do we the budget the budget committee agrees? Do we want to do the tour of the PD now, or wait till the end of the meeting and go for the tour? Let's do the tour. Then field trip. We get some questions. Sir, are you ready to take us for a field trip? At this point in time, we will adjourn to do a field trip to the police department. He has a remote the toilet. Welcome back to the Budget Committee. We just finished our tour with the Chief. Looking at this wonderful facility at this point in time. Okay. At this point in time, are there any questions that the Budget Committee has for the Chief concerning either the budget or the tour? One question I have, which is you know probably the most glaring, is you know, the legal expenses and how how much higher you think we may go and what can really what could be done about that? And where do you take it? There's nothing you can I know it's how do you even predict what legal expenses are gonna be? Um, yeah, it it was um, and it's not so, I get that's a tough question. Right. How do you how do you even guess at what that can end up being? Yeah, I mean you, you you try to forecast what you might need, um, but you you can never totally predict what's going to come down the pike with legal stuff. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, this one caught us by surprise, and it's bigger than we've had in a while. Um, I I hope that there isn't any more need for it, but um, and this is a question I have for the select board and the chief. When a case has been decided and when the town is found not to be at fault, do our attorneys ask for the town to be reimbursed for legal fees at that point in time? Or have we ever explored the possibility of, be, of re, being refunded legal fees from that situation? The situations that we're in right now, those kinds of situations where we're in, we don't get reimbursed. We're defending ourselves. Okay, because let's take the the case where the island, where they just according to the newspapers, anyways, that case was settled and the town was found not to be negligent, or had had an immunity. There's no fees. Right. There were no fees. There's no fees with that. Okay, but in, in cases where there are fees involved, yeah. 
Yeah. And the town has been found not to be liable for that action. Yeah, but you're going to be able to tell you this. Yeah, there, yeah, has it been talked with our attorneys? There wouldn't be a fee in those cases. If we had a case where we were sued by somebody, the local government center, our insurer, their attorneys defend them. Then why are we paying for the attorneys? These are, these are personnel issues. These are internal. These are internal. Okay. So there are no issues that where the town gets sued right. from a outside agent. Except, except in uh, taxes, abatements, uh, or things right. like that. Yeah. Okay. And I can right. tell you a case a few years ago, um, the town was sued, and the local government center covered the attorney up to a certain point, and then they finally said, we want you to settle this. And... Uh, the majority of the selectmen voted and said, no, we're okay. not going to settle it. So then they hired an attorney. But in that case, nobody won. But that would be on us. But that would be a, that because would be a we typical decided. type of case where if we had one, then we could have gotten this. Because that's part of where I was being confused. But that's unusual. Yeah, where I was confused about who's paying for the attorneys. Because in the case of we being, town being sued, it would seem that if we're paying for the attorneys and we're found not to be liable, there would be that recourse from the judge saying, listen, you brought this case before, you lost, you pay their fees. And what you're saying, these are only these are personnel issues that are we're talking about. Right, internal issues. So, uh, some of this right, that you have here is uh, the contract negotiations as well. Okay. Right. Right. So there's about 13, a little over 13,000 in uh, contract negotiations out of that. Right. But those are those are things that we can control with a number of hours. That's every three years. But right. We can control. I'm just talking about that litigation. That And it's just a thought to recoup any of those losses that we can recoup because we're certainly, with our budget, we have a finite amount. And if we're spending this amount on the litigations and there's a way to recoup some of that loss, right. we should be looking at that. Right. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Further questions for the chief? Uh, vehicle maintenance. We're not halfway through the year, but we're halfway through the over well, halfway through the budget. With every uh, year we get the vehicles inspected, and it's the process of getting them inspected that we actually use probably a third of our vehicle maintenance money to get them up to speed. So we send them down for inspection stickers, and they say it needs a tie rod end, or it or it, it needs uh, new tires, or so I see a surge in the spring when we do stickers, and then after that it levels off. Three, one, three, zero, five, two, one, that's three, one, actually pretty common. Zero, five, two, John. Okay. Okay. Let us move on to in front of you or given to you by Joanna is the current up to year, up to current year expenditures up through April. Thank you. Uh, yes. April 2014. Yep. Okay. Take a couple seconds to review, and if you have any questions or comments, mm -hmm. I noticed that a lot of the nonprofits haven't asked for any of their money. Is that typical by this time of year? Well, I can get it at the end of the year. Yeah, we try to hold particular. Huh. Mm -hmm. We prefer them not. We prefer the mass for the second half after the taxes. Okay. Attached to this, Kim emailed us a summary of the financials up until April, I believe, also. Are there any flags that we should be looking at at that point in time, or is everything just going along as it normally goes along? Because I noticed that between 20 and 30 percent is what the expenditures were for this time of the year for the different is that normal at this point in time well our, our server broke down mm -hmm. that's uh was a big cost emergency last minute cost um recently last week our coffee also broke down we had to replace the coffee if you remember last month so <clears throat> having said that we've made some adjustments in it Budget is extremely tight, and yet things are continuing to break down. So, uh, all in all, it's going to be a very, very tight year. Mm -hmm. Can we address those the server and the copier? 
And it also seems like with software at 92%, I'm sure most of that's licensing. And that's good, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Like with yeah. the park cemetery, it's paid automatic. Yeah. It a lot of people yeah. get automatic. It comes yeah. through this time of year, right? right. It's an like avatar and. Uh, no, but just as an example of why mm -hmm. something would be at 100% already, you yeah. just get paid off. Yeah, Jimmy yeah. said that some of these items are front loaded. I think the uniform budget. It's front loaded. You get a lot of the uniforms in the spring. In the spring, yeah. and, and so fall. that there's a big expenditure at that point in time, and then it slows down from there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you know if that server issue is in? Is in no. Here? No. No. Be in May. Because you're only forty-three percent. Would be. Yeah. You would be in May because it was last week. There's a couple of things that are going to be done to assure that it doesn't happen again. Yeah, to spend some time yeah. going over. That's, that's why we were gone so long. Good time. Mm -hmm. I know when we were playing in the budget last year, we had asked about a reduction in the welfare budget. And they were like, that's going to be tight, but it seems like we're pretty well under budget for that. Well, typically, the majority of her budget ramps up after summer, but we're, we're finding an increase now. Yeah. It usually happens in spring, and then it slows down during the summer a little bit, and then you'll find that it ramps up just before fuel assistance and just before all that happens. And in the cold weather. Yeah. Pat, it may be helpful if Heather can give us a, a number of clients that she is servicing throughout the year, okay, so that we can put a figure around that. Would that be possible? How many clients? Just a number. Just a number. I don't want names. I don't want anything. Just number of clients per month so that we can set what's going on. So like maybe the number of clients she had in 2013, right. the number of clients she had in 2012. And the clients she's now servicing. And now what she has up to date. Up to date. Because then we can figure out whether there's a few clients using a lot of money or whether we're uh, spreading it out over we can make, when we sit down to figure out next year's budget, we can have some hard data saying we're going to be probably servicing at least this many people. And then we can add 10% or 20% to that to make sure that the budget is always meeting because that is one of our mandated requirements from the state is we provide welfare for the town. So I don't want that budget coming up short. Um, I had no problem doing that. John's actually the uh, ex officio. I'd be more than happy to do it, if, but I don't want to step on this toes. No, it's between you. Yeah, just yeah. to the select one. should be the one. Get some information. Right. Okay. okay. Or, I, was, I was just thinking, like, we spent $5,500 so far this year through April. Is that helping 100 people? Is that helping 50 people? Is that, um, you know, what's I, for me, I'd be curious to know what is the average cost per case or per person that she's helping. You know, she helped my family four and it's five hundred bucks or is it I think that that would be difficult because you have you have to separate which kind of mm -hmm. uh, help you're getting because I don't think it just mean anything anyway. If you're in a homeless situation and you have a family of four, that's gonna be very different than somebody that um, a family of four has just lost their job and they have no food. It's a different kind of help. You know, our months probably rent. so it, it's maybe, different. Maybe uh, break down how much you spend on housing, and how much was on food. It varies. You know, the varies. Maybe she could it's too much money. of a variable. Some people come in and you know she'll spend some money and get them into a shelter situation. They refuse the shelter. Mm -hmm. Once they refuse a service like that, then there's no more help assistance from the town. And then you get a family in. And um, they have a place, and for whatever reason, down and out can't pay the rent. Well, now they're worth expending out, you know, 650 bucks a month for rent, you know, or get some fuel, or so you could be spending eight, nine thousand bucks a month on this family for a couple of months, and then you get three families that you only spend. You know what I mean? So it's hard to. <coughs> you want to get some kind of statistics? It's, it's, it's hard to get an average. It's hard to. 
every case is different. Right. And extremely different. I think that you think can get, average would mean anything. Right. You, yeah. I think that yeah. you're better off getting um, numbers, numbers, numbers like numbers. housing, numbers on rental, numbers on, on uh, how many people that she services. I think you're, you're better off doing that, I mean, for, you, for your data to see what, what, what's been said. I believe yeah. that in the budget itself, not to cut you off, she does document every check that she cuts to where organization to pay for fuel or for food. Yes. So it's here in the budget itself yes. under her under her category how much she's spending. Right. It's just uh, and that didn't from they case by case. Right. It's, it's so got a case it, on it. But. Right. Because if she gives a, a family three hundred dollars for food she writes down that so we can take the data from there. Right. I'm looking more for what numbers we are. Are they increasing? Are they staying about the same? Um, do we need to be careful in making our judgment because what may look good in spring may look horrible by the end of winter because of what the data says is going on? So if we could join if that could mm -hmm. be arranged, that would be wonderful. I'm sure she could also graph out the same past few years, mm -hmm. even if it's not numbers, just to see your graph. Wow, that's funny. What happened there? Like, you know, I remember saying, Bill Gates Friends. walks into this room, and everybody's yearly <laughs> average pay per year just went to millions. Are we really that different? No. But, you know, if there is a spike, well, there's a situation with a fan, with something that came up. Or, you know, right. we don't want people to be Perhaps we don't don't want get them to work with her. Yeah, now yeah to we start don't want to. You know, just something. to see that right. we're, so that you'd have the information you know, in the future. More detail. And I think it would help us when we're starting to look at the budget where that money, we really need to start focusing on that money. So I think just giving that data would be wonderful. It's not a rush. It's whenever she can get time, and I know she's busy, but that would be something that we could mm -hmm. we could look at. Um, any other comments, questions on this? The last piece of documentation we received for the last month was from Tim around the police result revolving fund. We received that that there was sixteen thousand seven hundred and some change in that change. Mm -hmm. uh, has that changed or is that the same or sixteen seven one three and three seven thousand April thirtieth. It's in your yeah. bad right. year. It's a great right. Right. So that has not changed at this point going into for April. Yeah, we came in that report this morning. So it's still the same. Okay. But the details are increasing. Right, right. We have some new ones. Yeah, we have, well, actually, we're probably in a bunch of them because of Memorial Day, some paving projects coming into town. Okay. Um, that sort of stuff. So. Okay. And a corollary question to that goes back to the new cruiser. Mm -hmm. Where are we in the process with the new cruiser? Yeah, it's been ordered. Yeah, now it's been ordered. We just wait uh, until they all come in together. Okay. So they'll actually arrive in the Lakes region all together. Car haulers will go to Irwin's Pony. Of serving. It's when they build them, so we could see them at the beginning of June, like the first week of June, I'm guessing. Somewhere, you know, May 30th to June 1, somewhere around there. And I think it was at the last meeting, Pat, that you said that one of the cruisers was not going to pass inspection this year. Has that changed? Yeah, that's the one that's down at, um, that's the 6A. A. It's down at the garage now, and it has been down at the garage for a couple of months now, a month and a half or so. That is not pass, passing inspection. So we have a current fleet of how many cars? Uh, with all the vehicles, we have uh, ten plus a motorcycle, and then and then we have uh, one with one covered. Okay. Does that one include the one that's parked up at the garage? Or no, that would just not mine. Is that that would not? Okay. Yeah, so it would be. So you're not nine. counting that one. Right, right. right. That, but are you including the new one? No, so yeah. the new one will be in, bring us back to uh, an even 10 cars, which is what we've always had for, for the main line. Mm -hmm. And John, and, uh, John is working on a report with the Chief and Tim on mileage, rotation. Um, there's got to be some changes in it. I've been so busy with the selectments we haven't got to it, but next couple of weeks we should be getting to it. And then that way John can each week, uh, mileage. mileage and things like that. Well, and part of the idea with that is uh, actually the main idea is to predict when they'll hit benchmark mileage. 
so that we can say, okay, and the, this vehicle that we got plan on, as long as it keeps running good, it's going to hit so many miles in this year, you know, so we can plan those out, okay. so we can predict them. Or if uh, one car seems like it's getting used more, it's easier for the chief to keep track of that. So they get replaced on two steps. Are you looking to do that on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis, John? Um, well, the reporting of the mileage, I haven't discussed it yet, probably maybe bi-weekly, because mm -hmm. I don't know how often you normally take it. Weekly, we take it weekly. Yeah. Yeah. And then it will be put in, um, and once I get it all set up, and we can have right over to the budget thing to take a look at it. Okay. Okay. Share with everybody, and it will be reports. Good, because as I was looking at it from the last time, a monthly report is great, but sometimes we don't need the monthly report. We need we could use a quarterly report, which would be every three months, which would update the mileage and would give us the data that we're looking at and would not be such a drag on, on you folks. It, it will be in such a way that you could get a report on any day what it's at. Okay. So mm -hmm. it, it won't be, you know, having to do anything. You just open it up. There it that is. data is given to us weekly anyway by the chief, so the chief has been asked to give us that information at selectman's meetings each week. Okay. So whether he gives it to us and we give it to you, um, if you just want it on a quarterly basis, we can oblige on that. But yeah, can give you a little bit of an idea, I don't think we can see it. Um, start filling some of the blanks here. These are the weeks, and this is usage to date yeah. by the current. Right. So if you'd be able to see um, how many miles have driven during the year or any given period of time. So you can see the quality of this so that will be located on the website? Uh, no, we probably we can get a report of it. We can send reports out. Yeah. So uh, what I'm thinking about, I don't know the rest of the committee, I, I'm comfortable with the PN on a quarterly basis that we get it, we get a report, we can get a report every three months. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be that very, it can be a very summative report yeah, yeah, of what's going on. Something, something like that. Something like that. Show us right. how many miles driven look. Okay. What, where they're well, at. We have this. The, right. the internal service report that gives us a lot. I have a question. You show on here. You mentioned one detective car. Yep. One un, one undercover car. Right. On this list, it shows two. Yeah. One of them is is uh, used for uh, narcotics. That's the undercover. Yeah. Okay. One that's and the other is the other is used as a cruiser. It's used by detectives. By detectives. Yeah. Right. Okay. The other one's incognito. Nobody knows that they are. Just out of curiosity, yeah. just to look at this line by line, but the bins on this report are the same. This one, this one. Yes, they are. 2D and 3D on uh, this report, and the bins are the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the Actually, the only thing that's different is the mileage. Yeah. We get the uh, vehicle maintenance report from the So I'll have to check with them. Because the, uh, I think the when they enter the car number, it back goes the uh, bin number for them. So it actually went in twice. Right, but it's two different cars. No, it's two different cars. Because if you look at the mileage, one has 35,000. Yeah, and, and one has six, 69. So, John, would you look into that and yeah. see what's going on? Yeah. So, is the committee comfortable with going to a quarterly report for mileage and whatever from from John? 
this point in time. One thing, I, I don't want to volunteer the extra work for you and it would help you if you needed it, but if we have mileage numbers for every week for the last X number of years, sort of like the welfare director is, if we can graph out the last years and we have a spike and it's understandable why there's a spike or if there's ever a lull and it's like next year we say to ourselves, well, we're going to cut your budget because you didn't use X number of gas. So we don't want to cut your budget and then have you go over budget next year. Or we don't want to raise your budget because of the spike for some reason. You know, so we could get like a moving average. You know, there's a lot of different kind of things where I've come back to you know instead of just looking at a number and saying, well, we're at 52 percent. Why is that? You know, it, it, we could graph those kind of things out and it'll just. That makes sense. I've got you know, some of more as a bike we can hear. I've got a lot of data from 2013 that's extrapolated from some of the maintenance things. So. Yeah. And then we Good. Good. further discussion on the current year expenditures. I just don't want to see us get into micromanaging. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes when we start saying, oh, can we have graphs for the last 15 years and we're going to look at every right. thing that moves that we're micromanaging. And I think that's why we pay managers to, to take care of that. Right. So and, and I don't think that's our responsibility. Yeah. And I agree with you, but I think there's some data, like with with, you know, with welfare, that we can base a, a decision on with, with harder data and not take away the take away her ability to manage, same with the PD. It's, that's why I'm asking for quarterlies, because monthly seemed to be yeah. too invasive that we weren't getting, and we really didn't need all that data. So the quarterly report, and now John can just set that up and we can take it from there, sir. Mm. And, and I think your concerns are actually, it's the opposite when you graph these things out. And I'm a corporate guy, so you know, graphs are, well, that's what we feed, that's what we feed off of, and that's why it's like, it's just a, a picture view of what's happening out mm -hmm. there and it's like wow that's a spike and it's understandable it spikes every year because it's bike week or it spikes right. every year because it's you know holiday season and we get extras out there you know something along those lines because numbers are just numbers if you get a nice little picture of it you can get an idea of why I'm on municipal budgeting is very different on what you're going okay further discussion if not, we'll move on to old business. Is there any old business that we have to take a look at? And I will ask, but it seems almost irrelevant, we'll ask for public input. You don't seem to, other than Catherine, <laughs> who's part of our public. Uh, no. I don't know what we actually would call you at this point, not public, not public, or, but anyway, do you I'm have any here input? Because I'm here because the budget committee is Cindy's meeting with one of our department heads, and it's the selectman's budget that's sent a question, so I came with the selectman. Okay, any input? <laughs> so I don't have any input as a public either. <laughs> All right. Any new business that we need to take a look at? I have just two pieces for the agenda for next time. I'd like to schedule the interview with Maureen uh, to join, to, for us to take a look at, to join the budget committee, if the, if the committee is comfortable with that. And the uh, second one would be, we all, I also sent an email that Kathy had sent us to look at the budget process. I would like to at least take a look at that next time around. Um, no decisions have to be made at that point in time, but just, uh, just to start the process, considering what we would like to take a look at. And Catherine, you'll be <coughs> there to, to give us the, the public input. I'll give you my suggestion. We have feedback for that. Committee members, any items we have to put on, need to put on the agenda? Uh, no, not for the agenda. I just had a question of where is the next meeting? Are we uh -huh. going to go to the top? Highway department. Highway department. Joanna, Joanna, our schedule over there will say to you. Highway department. Excellent. At? 7 o'clock. Second we'll, Wednesday. We'll have to bug Denny to get more coffee like this to keep us warmed up over there. At least you, over there it just echoes. <laughs> oh, over the place. So, all right, any other business kind of that has come before the budget committee that we need to discuss? If not, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Let's go home. We need a 50-inch TV in here so we can watch the doors again.
Yeah, one man. I'll be checking.